what Julie Borstrom was just talking about, Facebook reaching out to the big financials, uh, I, I guess obviously looking for client information or client data, hoping to mine that database to come up with new services. Uh, market seems to like it. Does, do you? Well, we think that there's a, a mixed story there. We know that uh, there's a potential for a good rebound in Facebook stock because they've just been hit quite hard. And this could be the catalyst for such a rebound. So uh, I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, how likely is it, Steve, that we're going to see some kind of a rebound or the cap this is the catalyst for a rebound, I should say? Well, I think that uh, this could serve as, as such a catalyst because uh, with, with Facebook, uh, they've got such a broad base, and yes, they've had suffered hits, but they've suffered hits before, and every single time they have rebounded. Also, uh, the general U.S. technology sector uh, defies a lot of expectations and continues to uh, make new highs. And we do think there are some uh, underlying reasons why the whole tech sector could rise and Facebook could be part of that as well. Uh, Stephen, if, if, uh, if we can, I, I want to sort of pull it broader and uh, take a look back and do sort of a, a compare how U.S. markets have been doing versus, let's say, uh, a lot of the other key markets in the rest of the world. And we've got an interesting graphic I want to throw up and uh, let viewers have a look at. There's uh, uh, how Wall Street finished up overnight. But uh, the other graphic I was talking about was the U.S. versus other key markets uh, globally. Uh, and when that comes up, Steve, you're going to be able to see that, you know, despite all this uh, trade stuff that's been going on since March, uh, you know, Wall Street just continues marching higher. There you go, up 6%. Tokyo is down 6 uh, Germany is down 7 Chinese markets are down 10%. Uh, you know, you can make a lot of arguments about uh, earnings growing at, in excess of 20%, uh, et cetera. But can you make an argument for value in these other markets which have taken a leg down? Well, I think that there's a short-term and a longer-term uh, dynamic at play. In the short term, we've got a highly divergent set of policies in the U.S. versus the rest of the world that are helping the U.S. outperform right now. We've got fiscal policy that's very strong and very stimulative in the U.S. We've had tax cuts. We've had deregulation. And this has quite immediate impact on the markets. At the same time, we've got a divergent monetary policy. We've got the Federal Reserve Board that's been hiking rates now seven times, uh, looking to hike rates at least another five times over the next several months. And yet, monetary policy always operates with a lag. Yield curve is not inverted yet in the U.S. That means that U.S. stocks still have a green light uh, to go higher. But this, fiscal, this monetary tightening in the U.S. has caused the dollar to strengthen, and that is the enemy of some of the foreign markets, some of the international uh, yeah. global markets you mentioned, like China, like emerging markets. These currencies have been hit hard. Uh, emerging markets uh, tend to hate a strong dollar because they borrow a lot of uh, dollar-based debt. All right. And, and so that explains a lot of the divergence. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.